People have been asking me about if I have any like predictions to offer when it comes to regionalism, like the idea that, well, maybe California can stay safe. Uh, maybe New York can. Listen, I have said a lot of negative stuff about Gavin Newsom, you know, the uh, uh, ostensibly Democratic governor of uh, California. The reason I've said negative stuff about him is because he's evil. He's a bad person. That being said, if you are interested in like a kind of regional defense during the Trump administration, California uh, filed hundreds of lawsuits against uh, the, the federal government pertaining to Trump's policies. He, you know, Gavin Newsom put the work in on that. Wait, am I blanking? Gavin Newsom, he was the governor back then, right? Or am I like completely blanking on that? California did. I know that much. Yeah, yeah. In office 2011 to 2019. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, wait, he was lieutenant governor back then. He was governor from January 7th, 2019, which means that he had a um, a two-year period where he led California's like lawsuits, you know, and at least in a rhetorical sense, of course, he wasn't the one filing them, but uh, he was very oppositional to Republicans. Anyway, it looks like he's uh, planning on doing that again. Yeah, Jerry Brown, yeah. It feels like Gavin Newsom has been governor forever because he's been such a commanding presence. Let me turn to California Attorney General Rob Bonta, who will be handling these potential legal fights against a Trump administration. It's good to see you. In response to Governor Newsom calling this special session, Donald Trump uh, just this morning said that Gavin Newsom is trying to kill our nation's beautiful California. He's made hmm. some similar comments before. So Newsom also sent state police to staged armed standoffs with federal agents during Trump's first term. It wasn't all legal courtroom battles. I don't remember that. Why is this special session needed? What do you need and what's your plan? Interesting comment from a non-Californian. Uh, the Californians think differently, including our, our, our leadership. And we made our voice heard very clearly through the election here. Uh, Trump was a, a big loser, lost by almost 2 million votes. And uh, Trump and Trumpism was firmly rejected here in California. We're going to continue on our path to progress. Uh, we're going to continue moving forward, uh, pursuing rights and freedoms, reproductive freedom, gun safety, um, compassionate and humane treatment of our immigrants, uh, climate action. And uh, we anticipate that we will need additional resources and funding for that. I'm grateful to have had the opportunity to speak with our governor uh, two days ago. Uh, His when lips are so shiny. He does look like a fish. This is true. You know, sort of a, a, an Ichthian warrior sent from the deep to help protect the nation's most populous state against fascism. He was on the verge of calling the special session. The special session is about getting my office primarily the resources needed to continue our path forward, continue our progress um, in the uh, likely event of some significant headwinds coming from Washington, D.C. So we are doubling down on who we are, what we stand for, our values, our people, our progress, um, fighting for our future. And we're going to have the resources ready to fight in court, push back, punch back, fight back as necessary if the Trump administration gets gets in the way. I, I, I will say this, okay? I Look, I, I genuinely do think that Gavin Newsom is a symptom of the corruption of this country, of liberalism and its inability to kowtow. I will also say that he is an effective uh, attack dog. He does not bother with civility. Remember when he debated Ron DeSantis like a year ago, just for the fun of the game? When Ron DeSantis was still a Republican presidential candidate, uh, he, he stepped out and he was like, I'll debate you. I'm not even running. I'll debate you. And then he cooked up. Yeah, yeah, he tore him apart. Again, and I, I wanted, this is like a level of nuance that I need ingrained into this conversation. Gavin Newsom is not a good person at all. He just doesn't like Republicans very much. He hates them, actually. You know, may, maybe the issue with him is that he's like, he, in absence of like, a, you know, Trump-led federal government, he's been going after homeless people. We just need to give him bigger fr fish to fry. California's opposition to the Trump federal government could be meaningful in a wide variety of ways. First off, economically, California is massive and incredibly powerful. And in addition to it being populous, its economy is largely built on things that they would have an easier time withholding from the nation. Agriculture, for example, you know? Like, New York's economy is tied up heavily in, in Wall Street, and Wall Street is run by people who hate you and voted for Trump. But in agriculture, it doesn't really work that way. I mean, maybe the 
bosses in agriculture, the industrial bosses, maybe they voted for Trump, sure, but it's still a process that involves millions and millions of people, you know? And likewise, the war against education that Republicans are waging does not serve well uh, Silicon Valley because there are lots of tech workers there and there are lots of businesses that are hiring people who are capable of doing the work that Silicon Valley needs them to do. And they're having a hard time filling those slots with American workers because our education system isn't great. So they bring in people on like H-1B visas. I guess what I'm saying is that if there's any state that would be capable of holding out against Trump, it would be California. California is massive, extremely populous with very strong like urban centers. It's a coastal state. It has a massive coastline, meaning that it's capable of maintaining a lot of trade independent of like being strangled by right, like red leaning neighboring states. Though thankfully, you know, they have uh Oregon to the north and Nevada to the uh, to the east. No water. No water. No water. That's not that good. That's true. No water. That's not good. You know, that's a weak point. I'll admit <laughs> the ocean's right there, idiots. That's true. California does not control its own taxes. Uh, they will fold as soon as they threaten to withhold federal funds. I'm not sure what you mean. California pays more into the government than it receives through federal funding. If there was a real standoff about like, um, you know, like financial distribution, the government would be the one hurting, not the state. They also have a state military. They have a very large state military. Yeah. And the California Highway Patrol, I'm pretty sure, has like the political power of like a in Hezbollah. <laughs> yeah, that's some NCR shit. What about Colorado genuinely? Co the problem with Colorado is that it's incredibly weak. That's it. Colorado, small economy, small population. It's nice, but California is a behemoth. And you need to be a behemoth in order to meaningfully resist what the Trump administration is going to try to do, you know? Like, when, when they start trying to carry out these mass deportations, you need a state capable of resisting the federal agents that they will send in. And you need a governor who's willing to do it. Governor Newsom is wasting no time reacting to a second Trump presidency. Today, he called a special session of the legislature, saying the goal is to outline a plan to defend California's policies from a Trump agenda. State Attorney General Rob Bonta also in San Francisco today answering those calls. Christy Smith has more from San Francisco. During Donald Trump's first term in office, California was often seen as the heart of the so-called resistance, frequently battling the president's policies. And today it appears the state is set to become the face of that resistance again. Governor Gavin Newsom says he wants to make sure California values are, in his words, Trump-proof. So he's called for a special really session of the like legislature the to create a strategy. Meantime, State Attorney General Rob Bonta was in San Francisco today. It's not just California, Oregon, and Washington. Washington would follow California's lead. That'd be good. The main the main problem like in in all these cases is they need to have like incredible backbone. Civility isn't going to do it. Gavin Newsom is not a civil person. You you need to like full on like both feet planted in the ground. Any like look at what Texas did to Biden. Texas says they don't want federal agents down there by the border. Oh, sorry, Biden's not sending them then, even though it's literally the national border. Oh, Texas and Florida don't want federal agents inside their, uh, their, their polling places. They don't want any federal observers. Oh, sorry. Nothing you can do then. You need a governor who can put their foot down. Yeah, Texas dog walked Biden and Gavin Newsom is going to have to work 10 times as hard to do so. And it'll be easier for him to do so the more states side with him. So if Nevada, Oregon, and Washington are also in on this, if they are firmly planting their feet down and saying, yeah, no, we're fighting literally everything in the courts. Like if you want to, if you want to run this by us without going to the courts, you will literally be doing so like through a line of our guardsmen. Just keep in mind at the end of the day, the National Guard go to the president. A governor can call in the National Guard, but the president is the ultimate authority on their use. He's the commander in chief. So the like there is a limit to how much you can do and how much you can get away with. Planning his plans to address Nevada has a Republican governor. Yeah, but not like that Republican. I don't think he's going to side with California or anything, but it would it would be nice if he wasn't like collaborationist. Express concerns about the president elect's policies. As the reality of a second Trump administration takes hold. I know there is a lot of fear and anxiety.
frustration. Bonta talked about how his office is prepared for potential challenges. As Attorney General, I will continue to use the full force of the law, the full authority of my office to address injustice. That's great. To stand up for all people. Damn, that's a nice bridge. Yeah, I hope they don't give it a name that isn't the color that it is. <laughs> Especially those who have been long overlooked and undervalued. To safeguard reproductive rights. To advocate... Golden Gate Bridge is a great name. You, Crimson Gate Bridge. Yeah, that's right. I just blew your fucking mind. Oh, yeah, did you tr did you pass over the Crimson Gate Bridge today? Yeah, that's like some Narnia shit. Hell yeah. For more housing. Newsom says the goal of the special legislative session is to boost legal resources to protect reproductive and civil rights, climate policy. It's the Golden State. Then paint it gold. Policy and immigrant families here in the Golden State. Uh, which will coincide with our regular session, which starts on December 2nd when we're sworn in, uh, so that we can uh, fully protect California and our values, uh, given that Donald Trump will be president again and he will control the Senate and possibly the House as well. State Senator Scott Weiner's office says the funds will help defend Weiner. the state's policy priorities and values, while Assembly Republican leader James Gallagher sees the special session this way. It's totally political. Uh, you know, wow. Gavin Wow, really? A special session called in anticipation of a presidential win is political? You're a fucking idiot. I hate these people. He was trying to set himself up to run for president in 2028. Oh, he definitely is. Yeah, that's definitely true. 100%. That's, that is true. That is true. Uh, and that's what this is really about. Uh, and meanwhile, you know, California struggles with some of the highest costs of living, that's crime. True. That's true. Uh, homeless well, wait. Mm, depends on your debt. I think that in terms of violent crimes, you're still like looking at the Sun Belt for that. In terms of like breaking into my car window, yeah, I'd say California's not doing too great. In San Francisco, Christy Smith, NBC Bay Area News. It's uh, it's not just Newsom. Pritzker is also um, has also God, I love looking at his face. He looks so cartoonish. Pritzker has also made claims to this effect, saying that he he wants to be like a fortress state, essentially. And and I, I if you know, it's actually very possible Pritzker might end up being the more powerful force in the long run because the Great Lake states are going to become more important with time because of their access to fresh water. You know, like Chicago is a very big powerful city and it also doesn't have anywhere near the housing problems that California is having, you know, at least not yet. So maybe. Oh, thank you, Thana. Fantastic. Yeah. Here. First this afternoon, Governor Pritzker promises Illinois will protect vulnerable communities as Trump returns to the White House. Political reporter Paris Schutt spoke with the governor today about this week's election. Paris? California makes 70 percent of our food. Yeah, that's that's why they're the ultimate team up. You know, Illinois has uh, access to water. California makes all the food together, like arms in arms linked as the tariffs come in, you know, you know simply starve them out. It's a siege. Well, yeah, Sylvia, the governor is making his first appearance since Trump's victory. And by his statements, he says Illinois will continue. Who makes the Internet? Probably also California, to be honest with you. <laughs> don't in, don't investigate that statement. I don't know and I don't care to be part of the resistance if Trump's agenda becomes extreme. And he says he will be a, quote, happy warrior leading that resistance. To anyone who intends to come take away the freedom and opportunity and dignity of Illinoisans. Did California refuse to enforce Trump's tariffs? You mean like everything coming in on West Coast ports? They wouldn't, the, the charge wouldn't go through and the, they would just flat out like withhold funding? Like they would prevent any federal agents from tracking or that would be like insanely illegal and that's the kind of stuff that gets the actual u.s military to invade california but if they could pull that off that'd be pretty based it would also make california like the number one like deflationary trade hub in the entire country they couldn't do it but it would be based i would remind you that a happy warrior is still a warrior you come for my people you come through me 
And a second Trump term could mean a lot of uncertainty for Illinois and Chicago. Will the president Love elect order dance. mass Love deportations of Illinois' undocumented population? Given that Illinois is a sanctuary state, meaning that local law enforcement can't cooperate with federal immigration authorities. Prisker says that Illinois will remain. Prisker has mob connections. California gets the goods and they'll launder it. Are you so you're suggesting basically that the way out of fascism is to return to like a like a 1930s esque like organized crime uh like huey long corruption to undermine the fascist government like like the the trump sends the military into california but they can't move anywhere because all their fuel has already been sold by like italians you know working on the inside to make a few extra bucks or whatever they open up their rations as they're like you know they're parked in federal land in nevada getting ready for the big wave and they they open up their rations and everything in there has already been eaten and looted by some guy in like a you know like a processing plant in illinois that's the way Honestly, J.B. Pritzker should run for president in 2028. He's very FDR-like. Let's not go crazy. Um, he's probably a better man than Newsom. Suddenly, I'm very pro-states' rights. Funny how that shifts around, huh? Still a billionaire, though? I'm really sorry, but, like, being a billionaire makes you, on average, less evil than Gavin Newsom. Like, the, he, the Gavin Newsom has, through spectacular personal achievement, reached a greater height in this field than merely being a billionaire. Newsom Pritzker, 2028. Give up our governors. Trans rights to health care have been in Oregon state documents for years. I've been pro-states rights. By the main issue with Washington and Oregon is that Portland, Seattle, Springfield, and Tacoma aren't that strong. And in the eastern parts of both of these states, there are like a million neo-Nazis who are waiting to retake the western part. So the main, and like, the main issue in these states are like, I feel like any kind of meaningful opposition would be met with a wave of violence and stochastic terror that the police would allow to happen. In a sanctuary state, and if the president retaliates by withholding federal public safety grants, he will take the president to court. There's also more at stake. With the president's promise to eliminate the Federal Department of Education, school districts like CPS could lose federal funding, and the state relies on federal dollars for infrastructure. Pritzker says he's already making calls to make sure... I don't know how much you can really do, like, through the court, when everything would just end up going to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court would side with Trump every time. Like, do we really think the Supreme Court is going to remain, like, impartial or moderate or whatever? When Trump is in power? I My assumption is they're basically just going to, like, have the most obviously egregious rulings anytime it's suitable to them. You know? J.B. Pritzker almost single-handedly financed a state referendum to institute progressive taxation in Illinois while being governor. So you're saying he's like an Engels figure. That federal spigot does not run dry. Federal infrastructure dollars, again, are That's decided true, on, an, on an apolitical, non-political basis. That's how they're supposed to be decided. Um, and and indeed, we've, you know, trust me, I've, you know, contacted lots of people in the federal government that I know, uh, elected officials or, you know, appointed political officials to make sure that they know what Illinois needs. And, uh, and I can say, you know, for certain that, uh, you know, the independence of those uh, divisions of the agencies really are making the decisions. But Trump has vowed to dismantle many of those agencies. As for lessons the Democratic York? Party needs to learn from Tuesday's surprising result, Pritzker says it's too early to tell. But he says down ballot Democrats won many of their races here in Illinois, even in areas where. Yeah, I'd agree, Thana. California, and Illinois seem like uh, better places than most to hold it out. And what comes to how counties across California voted in the presidential race, the results so this? far favor Kamala Harris as expected with the vice president. Perish, then the rest of our rights and liberties will topple just like dominoes one by one. They'll go down. That's why. T what is this? What, what is this? Section 230 is specifically mentioned. OK. Today, I'm announcing my plan to shatter the left wing censorship regime and to reclaim the right to free speech for all Americans. And reclaim is a very important word in this case because- This isn't new. Didn't he put these out like nearly a year ago? Yeah, we've seen this. They've taken it away. In recent weeks, bombshell reports have confirmed that a sinister group of deep state bureau- okay, is, Yeah. Also, never link me Instagram videos. You can't even fast forward through them. It's crazy. 
vice president getting 57 percent of the vote in the Golden State compared to Trump's 40 percent. But when we look into how some of our specific counties in the area voted, it really is a different story. So in our area, let's check out Sutter County. That usually skews Republican and really the latest numbers just continue that trend with President Trump leading Harris pretty handily, as you can see right there. Then in Yuba County, similar situation there. Trump leading Harris in the latest voting numbers there as well. You can see. Yeah, we get it. Very we lost. Handily him about things underneath the Capitol. I thought very interesting was our map of California. Half of it or more geographically, as he says, protect California's values from a political. All right, I don't know. I don't know what they're cooking. Just had a bunch of videos linked up on the subject of Gavin Newsom resisting Trump era policies. We'll see how it goes. New York Governor Kathy Hochul said she would also fight against another Trump term. If you know anything about Kathy, you should know she's completely full of shit and should never be trusted.